So most of the time when you are dealing with optical elements, you are not looking at a curved refractive surface. At least you are not looking at a single curved refractive surface. Normally, usually what you are doing is you are, where's my lens? You are looking at a lens. So instead of a single refractive spherical surface, most of the time when you're dealing with something geometric, optical, you are dealing with one, two refractive surfaces. So as the light comes in, um, so I'm just going to do it for convex, convex lens as the standard case. And um, if uh, it's concave, then the way you can handle it is by reversing signs at the right places. So center, this is the optical axis. So when you look at this lens, um, what, um, so the expression that uh, we want to, um, so we want to be able, I want to be able to drive two things in the remaining 30 minutes or so. One is the, the lens equation, that uh, the one that I wrote down before that um, that want to use later. The second is, uh, I think this is what's referred to as thin lens equation. This is uh, something that expresses the focal length of a lens in terms of the parameters of this uh, refract reflective refractive surface. So you have index of refraction n1 outside, index of refraction n2 inside, um, and index of refraction n1 outside again, and um, these curved surfaces, they are at some radius of curvature. You can imagine that this is the center and this is the radius of curvature R1. And uh, for this, here's the center and this is the radius of curvature R2. Good. So um, what we want to look at is uh, what is the, uh, the focal length of um, or not focal length, what is the, um, how does the light, mm, when a ray of light goes through, how does it refract? So, I mean, I can draw it qualitatively. Let me start out with that. So, so if I have an object out here, let me just draw an arrow. And I look at the light ray coming from here. Um, this is how this uh, light ray would behave as it goes through here. So imagine the light ray that's going out parallel, um, parallel to the surface, I'm sorry, not surface, parallel to the axis. Then, oh, I'm not drawing this quite right. Mm. Parallel. Then on this surface, uh, there's a, perpendicular here. I'm not quite drawing it correctly, but it bends here. And then here, um, there's another perpendicular. And it, um, so as it refracts through here, it bends towards the surface normal, smaller ang outgoing angle. As it refracts through here, um, so we are assuming the N2 is greater than N1 it reflects away from the perpendicular, or away from the surface normal, and it turns out to be actually refracting twice in the same direction. So this parallel ray goes, um, it reflects through, and it, um, and it uh, goes out like this. And, um, you can imagine a second ray. I guess uh, we won't get into the detail of this, but you can imagine a second ray that's crossing closer to the center here. So for the second ray, it would look like this. A second ray that's uh, crossing closer to the center. So this angle is theta in, so it'll reflect through like this, theta, uh, theta one, theta two, and 
if it's uh, going out at mostly the same spot, what would happen is that this outgoing ray is actually parallel to the incoming ray. So this two parallel surfaces would have just shifted the beam a little bit, but not much beyond that. So this arc goes like this. These two rays from this single point appear to cross at some point here. And this is where we are going to say the image forms. Good. So that is the um, mental picture I want to have in your head. And what I want to, I think I have just enough amount of time, figure out is, let's say we know these parameters of this lens, R1 and R2, indices of refraction. And we know the object distance, DO. Then the question would be, can we figure out where this image distance will be? Can we figure out this image distance? OK, so as we go through this, I'm going to use this expression twice. And I'm going to make one approximation. I'm going to make the approximation that we are dealing with thin lens. And that means two things. It means I'm going to treat the thickness of this as essentially being 0. And so there's a single point where the lens is. The second thing, effect of this, is that because the thickness is zero, this displacement will be very small. So displacement here is, for this ray, is zero. And so this ray goes through unaffected. And this ray, it bends twice. And we'll figure out how much it bends. But, um, but there, will, so there will not be this displacement that we got uh, with the thick lens. So, what I do, I would like to treat this as a two-step process. I would like to think of this as this lens, first forming an image that's uh, way out here. So let me demonstrate what I mean. You see these two rays that I had uh, after the first surface, right? Yeah. What I want to imagine is, what would I have if this second surface wasn't there? If this medium extended forever, then I would have uh, this ray going out like this. And I would have this ray going out like this. I may not have drawn this quite right. Um, so I guess depending on the curvature, uh, it's possible that I would find the um, image on this side or image on this side. <laughs> Um, for the purpose of this, I want you to imagine that the image would be on this side. So, you know, these will cross way out here somewhere, and this is where my in first image is, and this distance is what I want to call my first image. Good? I can figure out the first image distance using this formula. I can say, um, so n1 over d0, I know that, plus n2 over this image distance. It's a di1, intermediate image 1, is equal to n2 minus n1 over r over r2. Wait, no, R1. This is the radius of curvature, so over R1. Good? Yeah. So, so I can solve for this for di1, but let me label this equation 1. And what I want to do is I want to use this image as the object, as the source of light for this second surface. And I'm going to use a procedure that you will see in the future later better justified. Um, so, but it's because the same procedure that you will see later, that's why I want to do it now at this early point on. So if I want to break this down as a two-step process using this one formula, so 
once uh, I have taken care of the first surface, then as I analyze the second surface, I don't really care where these light rays came from. I only care about the direction that they are going. And the direction that they are going in is consistent with, um, well, light ray that's coming from this object. So I want to be able to say that now there's a little bit of wrinkle in that you can see it here, right? If we can really say that these rays are coming from some object, the object better be on this side. This uh, object is in, on the wrong side. You don't see this uh, too much in optics. You see it often enough. This is what we call virtual object. Do you remember the distinction between virtual image and real image? Real images where the light rays uh, appear to be come from and really come from. Or like for the real image, light rays really go through the real image. For the virtual image, it doesn't. It's the same thing for the virtual object. It's what you use as the source um, incoming direction of light. But when it's a virtual object, the light rays never actually go through the virtual object. And the rule that we'll use, that we'll introduce later, is that um, for virtual objects, you take the distance, and the, the object distance you use for the equations, it's going to be negative. So, so for the second equation that I'm going to write down, it'll be, um, I have to be careful, because I'm dealing with this surface here. So I need to write this down correctly. Um, so. N1 is the, so I have to sort of make sure the sub correct subscripts go in the correct places. So N1 will become N2. That's the, the medium for the rays on the incoming side. So it should be N2, N2. And the object distance, I'm saying it's going to be this DI1 except negated. So over minus di1 plus n2, that's the index of refraction on the um, outgoing side, this outgoing side. So that's n1. So n1 over. And this image distance, that's actually what we are trying to find here, di. So over di is equal to. Uh, this expression, the difference of the index of refraction, so um, outgoing minus incoming, n1 minus n2. And instead of being it just radius of curvature, it's going to be minus r2. Does this minus sign make sense, kind of? So the formula that you have seen here, is for this arrangement, where radius of curvature, it's a convex. When it's concave, the effect of the surface is going to be opposite. So when your center of the circle is on the other side, instead of in the, the same formula is actually valid as long as you reverse the sign on R. So that's what this minus sign here is. Good, all of that sounds okay. Sorry, I, I'm throwing a bunch of ad hoc rules that are not very well justified. <laughs> but, um, so let me go through the algebra. Let me just say, so all this is equal to right hand side ends up being the same. It's n2 minus n1 over the radius. n2 minus n1 over r2, which hopefully is assuring because then it means it's behaving like a, a converging thing. So, uh, let me just go through the algebra so that I can uh, have an expression to show you. So what I want to do is, oh, I think this is what I want to do. I don't actually want to go through algebra. I see this term here. I see that that's exactly the same as this, except opposite in sign. So I am going to add equations one and two that will cancel out these two terms with this unknown that I don't really want to deal with. Let's see what that gives me. 
Um, when I do that, this is what you get. Um, equation 1 plus equation 2 gives you n1 over d0 plus n1 over di. And um, these two terms canceled. I'm not even going to write them down. And I have the right hand side is equal to um, n2 minus n1 over r1 plus n2 minus n1 over r2. Or combining them, it's equal to n2 minus n1 times 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. Let me do one last step. I see n1 here, so let me divide that by n1 on both sides. Then what I end up with is 1 over d0 plus, so object distance, plus the reciprocal of the image distance is equal to uh, the ratio of this index of refraction, n2 minus n1 over n1 times 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. So this is the thin, uh, thin lens equation that combines the two, e two information that I said at the beginning I want you to cover. One is um, this equation that we are going to use a lot next time we meet. 1 over object distance plus 1 over image distance is equal to 1 over f. So for that to work out, what we need to do is we need to make the identification that the right hand side here is equal to 1 over focal length. So this gives an information on how to get the focal length of a lens from the parameters of the lens.